Let's take a look at a crank radial piston motor. So the difference here between a crank radial and a cam radial is really where the pistons are mounted. So in a cam radial piston motor, the pistons were actually mounted inside the rotor that drove the output shaft. Now on a crank radial piston motor, the pistons are actually mounted and move, oscillate in and out from within the housing, so the stationary housing. And as you can see from this cutaway and the painted line that I've drawn in here, the oil flow that's actually coming into this piston is gonna be coming from the manifold. And that manifold's getting its oil from a port that's cut through this spool. And that's getting its oil from the work port right here, A or B. Now they're equal size. And so then again, bi-directional, simply putting the oil in on the other port will direct it to another one of the pistons. So we can actually see there's a piston here, there'll be another one on the back side here, 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 and the one where the cutaway would be. So we have one, two, three, four, five pistons on this crank radial piston motor. So the actual output shaft itself is supported by taper roller bearings, one here and one in this end housing. The crank that's connected to the output shaft, so if I just sort of slide this down, the output shaft that's up here, just off the of shot right here. So the output shaft is connected through a shaft to an eccentric lobe, and that eccentric lobe is gonna get pushed on by the hydraulic pistons on these slippers right here, these movable slippers. So as the hydraulic oil sent in the work port, the work port directs it through the passage, the passage sends it to the piston, so up through to the piston, the piston then pushes on the eccentric lobe, causing the eccentric lobe to move. When the lobe moves, the output shaft moves, so does the manifold, and the manifold then, this output that sent it to this piston now sends it to the piston that's part of the cutaway. Then as it continues to rotate, it's gonna send it to this piston and then to the next one and the next one. So the timing of where the oil goes next is actually determined by the movement of the output shaft itself. And so they're large motors, they're heavy motors. Again, uh, a volume of oil on the piston causes a movement, but there's only one eccentric lobe. If you wanted to make this motor a larger displacement and an even greater torque, they can have multiple lobes, so more than one lobe with sets of pistons together. And that would increase its displacement and increase its output torque. Not a common motor for us to see in industry right now, but uh, there is some information uh, in your modules and in your textbooks, and so we just wanted to show you a cutaway of what that looks like. An application you might find this crank radial motor actually working in would be a uh, winch application. So lifting up, let's say an anchor cable or an anchor chain with an anchor attached to it on a larger, uh, larger vessel, or possibly another place where they were uh, used is on a paddle wheel motor scraper. They were used to drive the paddle wheel chain.